Let's talk about motion now. Motion is so important, plays a very important role in maintaining the body's metabolic rate, keeping that body burning fuel at all times. You want to keep that up, keeping the muscles strong. Remember, it's muscles that are going to burn most of the fuel in your body. You would need to keep your muscles strong. Motion is going to take a lot of pressure off of the other end. It's going to take some of the pressure off of meal planning. If you're busy burning fuel, meal, pl meal planning is not so important. It's not so critical. Remember Lance Armstrong eats 7,000 calories a day. Well, he did when he was racing his bicycle. Now that he's retired, you see, now he's going through the same kinds of problems we are. He can't eat like that because he's not burning it. And this is true of all of us. The more active we are, the more calories we need to eat. So activity is going to be, I think, something that you can add into your regimen. If you're not already doing it, add it into your day. Plan it in. Don't say, well, I can't get 30 minutes here, so I, I, I won't do it, or I'll wait until I can get 30 minutes. You know, 10 and 10 and 10 is 30. Get 10 minutes. If you can just go out and walk around the building once, that's good. Everything helps. So get more activity. And the activity, well, the activity can be almost any kind of activity. Do something, first of all, number one, that doesn't hurt you. You know, at our age and middle age, all of us have aches and pains. We have joints that are not quite as, as strong or as fluid as they used to be. So don't hurt yourself, all right? No pounding. Running, jogging, well, was good when we were younger. I really wouldn't advise that. I think it's pretty hard on, on the body. There are some very talented runners who, uh, who have been running their entire life, uh, but I think that it might be a little bit much. Walking is just as good. Remember, you burn the same number of calories whether you walk a mile or run a mile. Running a mile, you get there sooner. That's okay. Walking that mile is gonna burn the same number of calories. Get daily activity, plan it into your schedule. Set aside time when you can relax. Go out and do something enjoyable. That's the second thing when we talk about motion. One, that you don't hurt yourself. Two, that it's enjoyable. If it's enjoyable, you're going to look forward to it. If you look forward to it, of course, you're going to be doing it more often. You're going to look forward to doing it. You're not going to want to skip it. Exercise or activity can become a positive addiction. Many people love to take their walk. And they do it for lots of reasons that you wouldn't expect. I had a patient now that I was trying to get outside. You need to exercise. You need to be more active. She finally agreed to call the phone number that I gave her for the local mall walkers. All of the malls have phone numbers that you can call and probably in your area as well. Call the mall and say, do you have a group of walkers that come out early in the morning and the malls will open up and let the walkers come out and do this. And now she reported back to me about a month later. She didn't talk about the walking. What she talked about, in fact, was that she had made some friends. She had met some ladies, some girlfriends as she called them. And she says, you know, three days a week, we're out there just uh, having such a great time and we're laughing and we're talking and I could hear it in her voice. What had happened to her in going out and doing this activity became almost secondary to also the positive things that come along with activity and exercise. She had made friends. Her social uh, aspect of her life had, had brightened the emotional aspect of her life, which then in turn brightened her physical or strengthened the physical aspect. Her blood sugars had stabilized. Her cholesterol had come down. She was losing weight. She was very, very happy. In fact, it was only later in the conversation that she began to actually talk about the actual exercise. It had kind of faded into the back. Oh yeah, I guess I am. I'm exercising, but gosh, I'm having such a great time. So remember, go out with a loved one, make it quality time. Pick your spots carefully. A walk along under the trees is gonna be better than walking along the sidewalk in a busy uh, part of town. So you might even take time to go to a park where you can enjoy. Remember, physical activity is going to overlap into other areas of your life, and it's going to support the emotional and the spiritual and the social aspects as well. We're gonna talk more about these this when we talk about the last M of motivation later.
Another very important part of exercise, of course, is making sure that you have enough fuel on board when you begin your exercise. You don't take off on a long trip in a car with a gallon of gas. You know that you need to have a proper amount of fuel on board, not worth risking a low blood sugar episode. So what I would like for you to do before you begin an exercise session, especially if it's going to be away from the house, two things. One, check your blood sugars and see how much fuel do I have in my blood. If it's 80, not high enough. You're going to run that too low. You're going to be having hypoglycemic or low blood sugar uh, symptoms. That's dangerous. So uh, eat a little something before. You might wait a half hour or an hour after you eat. Let that food digest a little bit and then go ahead and do your exercise. If the blood sugars are 180, well, you have plenty of fuel on board. Just to be careful, though, I think you probably should carry some sugar with you uh, just for emergencies. If you feel that blood sugar getting low, then you could take a little bit of sugar with you. 15 grams of sugar is going to raise blood sugars about 50 points. That's a pretty good ballpark figure. 15 grams of sugar will raise your blood sugars about 50 points. If the blood sugars start to get too low, if you start to have these symptoms of shaky and sweaty, then make sure that you have a few of these little maybe glucose tablets. You can get these at any drugstore. Two grams each supplement the sugar in your blood if you're out exercising. One other thing we can think about when we talk about exercise is weight loss because they come hand in hand. Helping your body to lose this extra body fat that you may have gained around the waist. Exercise is going to help you do that. You cannot starve that weight away. Some people, though, will find that they don't start losing weight right away, and that's, that's frustrating for them. In fact, so discouraging many of them. At just the critical time when things are really starting to happen, they start to give up. Take a measurement of your waist before you start your exercise program. And here's what I, I think you're going to find. That as you begin to exercise, your waist is going to get smaller. What does that mean? Well, fat only weighs about half as much as muscle. It's fluffy. It's kind of, kind of big and thick and bulgy. Muscle is not. Muscle takes up less room. When you begin to exercise, here's what we sometimes see. When you step on a scale, if you've lost fat but gained a little bit of muscle, weight isn't going to change. That's discouraging to some people. Remember that you are gaining muscle as you get stronger. You may be losing fat. The amount of fat is going down, but a little bit of muscle is added each time. The scale, again, doesn't change. Don't get discouraged. You need to realize that you will hit these types of plateaus as the body readjusts to your exercise level. You are changing your body you may not be losing weight, but if you will measure around your waist, I think you can be confident that, ah, things are changing. My waist size is changing. If my waist size is changing, my body is changing because I am losing this body fat that is gumming up those doors. Remember that body fat gumming up the doors? Your insulin is ineffective. We're going to get over that insulin resistance by being more physically active. Remember when you were a kid and you exercised? Well, you didn't call it then. You didn't call it exercise. You called it play. I think it's important that we be playful, that we enjoy our ability to be physical, to do things in this body. Play should be joyful. Choose activities that energize you, that rejuvenate you, that support you, that help you to, to feel like you're making real progress in your fight against diabetes. Believe it or not, yoga or Tai Chi, very good forms of exercise, very slow motion, kinds of stretching and strengthening kinds of exercises. I call these exercise in disguise. Many people find these very enjoyable and they don't even realize that they're exercising. So disguise your exercise. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you are active and you're not hurting yourself. You know that you are helping to support yourself and strengthen yourself. Keep it up. It's very, very important. So you're going to choose exercises that don't hurt the body, that don't cause problems with the knees or problems with the back. You're going to choose, in fact, exercises that help to support those parts. Swimming is a wonderful exercise. You can take the weight off of the joints. The water helps support that. In fact, many people find that their back starts feeling better as they begin to strengthen these muscles around this what we call core area. Strengthen the back. 
by strengthening and straightening the spine. Strengthen these muscles in front and straighten the spine. Water exercise, water aerobics or swimming itself is quite good.